Hi everyone, welcome to the Holistic Icon Podcast, which I think I'm also going to call as the Women Wired for Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Chalam. This podcast was created to fulfill my obsession for an understanding of what symptoms are, the science behind them, and the puzzle as to why most women struggle for years before they seek solutions for their symptoms. I'm also very passionate about teaching, not only my patients, but also people who come in contact with our practice because it helps me empower myself and them with knowledge. What kind of knowledge are we talking about? The knowledge that our health is probably the one asset we all can control. This control begins with knowing all that has been known about it. It is not simply about knowing a disease and its name and the medications that go with it because that is an option. Usually medications as the only option is when you're nearing death. But to truly live a fulfilling life, we need to know how to tap into our innate ability to heal ourselves and also have all the other qualities that help us get there like grit, passion, being consistent, and having an awareness. So in today's podcast, our conversation with is with our special guest, Shelly Belici, who is the author of the book, Beautiful Awakening. Our discussion surrounded around her journey to where she is today as an author and as a wellness and fitness coach. So Shelly started having health issues in her teenage years, which at that time did not seem like a big deal because it may have been the norm to have menstrual abnormalities that were treated with oral contraceptive pills. But through her adolescent years, she felt her health failing. And somehow she was able to connect that her lifestyle might be responsible for this failing health. And she took that route on trying to change both her awareness and what she put into her body. So the food became her medicine. She started off with juicing and she found the solution for her personally was in a plant-based diet. So she gives you a lot of tips on how to make that shift, how to use whole foods, plant-based diets. So those of you who are struggling, who are afraid to make those changes, that po- this podcast might actually give you a few steps that you can take in order to shift your health and wellness. So without any further delay, let's talk to Shelly Belici, who found that food actually not only helped with her hormonal abnormalities, but with her mood and with her skin, and truly brought on a beautiful awakening. All right. Hi, guys. Dr. Chalam and Marina from Holistic and Integrative Center of Novi. And we have another special guest this week. Uh, and this is Shelly Belici. I just learned to pronounce her name, and I hope I did it right. Um, Shelly, I'm going to have you introduce uh, yourself to our um, audience because um, I think you can do a better job than I, w- I would be able to do. Yeah, absolutely. Hello. Good evening, good afternoon, and I'm so happy to be here. So my name is Shelly Belechi, and I empower women to feel great, look amazing, and take control of their health with the power of a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. You're also an author. Don't forget to tell them that. Yes, I'm so happy to share my book with the world. I just published Beautiful Awakening in August, and... The women are starting to read the book, men are starting to read the book, and I'm getting good feedback from it. So um, I'm just really excited and hope that it will help lots of people. Yep. So um, let's start with this, Shelly. I know you, uh, your journey into health and wellness, it's not like you, your background is in health and wellness, right? Yeah. You, you found your way into this world. Tell us what got you uh, started. What, what were you searching for and how did you stumble upon this where you fe- felt that was a void that something that you learned you could actually share with the rest of the world? 
Yeah, actually, I had my own beautiful awakening, so to speak. Um, I was pretty healthy growing up, but I did have a few things that kind of came to a head, I would say, in college. Um, I was suffering from an eating disorder, and I knew one day that if I didn't change, that I was going to end up in a really bad place, and it was scary, and I was feeling depressed, and I was feeling sick, and um, just disconnected with myself, and I started, you know, researching what can I do to help myself. Um, can I just interrupt you there for a second? Yes. What is the eating disorder? Can you explain what eating disorder you had? Yeah, so basically, um, I went to college and I was going to a lot of parties. I was drinking a lot of, you know, beverages and eating lots of uh, delicious fattening food in the evenings. And I started to gain weight and I'm a pretty petite person. And so um, I wasn't quite sure <laughs> the healthiest way to go about it. Um, it, it became sort of a spiral, like um, I would just be so hungry and want to eat all this food, and then I would throw it up, or I would, so yeah. Almost like a bulimia kind of a yeah, and then I would, yeah, exactly, and then I would like drink a lot of coffee and see how long I could go without eating, and then um, just, you know, try to, to not eat, and so... I was definitely trying to help myself, but it was because of the environment, it was, a, it was a spiral, like, oh, go out and drink again and eat the unhealthy foods, and then it just was going all downhill. And so, so prior to that, prior to you going to college, I'm sorry, I know we have a feedback, but we have an audio situation, guys, um, I know. with us with, uh, with regards to that. But prior to you going to college, would you say you were very healthy at that time? You know, prior to going to college, I actually had some kind of hormonal issue and the doctors put me on birth control pills to remedy it. Um, my body was just off and the pills made everything regular like they do for so many women. Um, but, and I was pretty underweight. I mean, maybe not so much, but always smaller than everybody else. And so for me, like getting on hormone pills and gaining weight was like a great thing. It's like, oh, I have more curves now. And um, I'm finally bigger. Like everybody, you know, would always comment on me being skinny or, or really thin or whatnot. Well, were you in the Bay Area all the time? I, yes, I grew up in the Bay Area. Well, that's, that's a part of being in Bay Area, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. So, um, so, so, yeah. Other than that, you know, everything was good. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say like I grew up pretty standard American. My parents they cooked a lot of food at home. We always had access to fruits and vegetables. But like any other American kid, I wanted you know the burgers and the fries and the pizza. But, you know, it wasn't like overboard. So it, it was pretty healthy, you know, no diabetes, um, no like high blood pressure. I mean, kids don't have high blood pressure. Maybe they do, <laughs> but. Well, now they do, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So you got into college and then your lifestyle changed because you wanted to fit with the crowd and you were drinking, partying, eating stuff. And you lost that slender, you know, the naturally slender looking image. And is that what you started noticing some changes or did people comment about it? It was never like that. I just felt like I was, I just felt terrible. Um, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was, um, yeah, becoming more aware of the pressures of society to be thin, but also to fit in with the party crowd. And I was disconnected, I think, from a lot inside of me, like a lot of my gifts and talents. And I was just you know, trying to enjoy life, but in a different way than ever before. And so um, I, I just, it developed to be something that I think now looking back on it was like um, not loving myself. Yeah, like, yeah. Not, you were not being authentic. You were not trying being authentic, being disconnected spiritually. It was like that everything that makes up a whole and healthy and happy person was just like, completely off but I was so young like you know who talks to us about these things as we're growing up right right mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times we want to stand apart but at the same time we want to blend in 
And when you look at what is the norm, a majority, like 75% of the people who behave um, like a crowd, the crowd mentality, drinking, partying, eating garbage, nothing ever happens to them. Mm. And a few 30% who just completely their health and their life spiral out of control. Um, again, I'm throwing these numbers, not like I know the statistics, but I'm just saying that's what I find because the majority of the folks do well during those early 20s. Mm -hmm. What changed in you that you felt like, I mean, what was that, like you said, an awakening moment that you said, you know what, this has to change? Yes, I just felt like I was dying inside. And if I didn't change, I, I would end up, you know, in a bad place. Like I would die. I couldn't sustain the type of lifestyle that I was living and it was just really depressing. And I think people on the outside kind of knew, um, but I wasn't willing to just admit it and like ask for help, like to go to a doctor or a psychologist, like, oh my gosh, you know, what is this? I, I just wanted to really um, change my, my habits in a healthy way to see what I could do first. And that really, man, I, it really caused me to step away from everything and dig deep and just start fresh and build from there. And it was the, it was a very challenging time in my life um, to break away from that and to kind of go on my own path. But I'm so glad I did. Had I not, I mean, who knows? Like, I'm sure I would be okay, but who knows? I, I just really love... Um, what has come from that experience. So how long would you say you have been depressed? I don't know. I, I'm trying to, I get the feeling that you struggled with body image at that time. But were you also, uh, when you say other people notice it, would you say that they noticed that you were getting more edgy and anxious? Was there a mood shift? Was there a shift in not just your how you look, but how you behave? Um, I think people noticed that, you know, I would eat a lot and then I would exercise a lot, like to, to compensate, you know, and it was a common thing. I mean, I was around other young women who I think were going through the same struggles. And I think a lot of young women today and maybe even adult women struggle with eating, um, whether it's binge eating or under eating or whatever it is. Um, and for me, getting down to like whole healthy fresh foods and juicing I use juice therapy as a way to get myself back on track and that has been the most powerful thing I know some people will kind of write it off like oh it's a fad but it's actually um, fasting is an age-old therapy that's been around for years and I know that there's centers where they rehabilitate people through the use of um water fasting which I don't normally do because it's super intense but like juice fasting um yeah, yeah. yeah I did a juice fast when I was in college to to break the unhealthy habits and um it really changed my whole outlook on eating I mean I just I felt reborn through that um I felt reconnected spiritually um it was hard don't get me wrong it was it's not easy it's easier when you're younger because you're like really open-minded and you'll kind of try anything and you just have a lot of desire and dreams and like you know I just I wanted to change I was like look this is this is who I am this is what I want to do and I'm going to get healthy and I want to feel energetic and I want to look great in the meantime and I felt like the the fruits and vegetables the plant-based diet um raw vegan foods fruits and vegetables plants nuts seeds they all gave the best benefit for that so explain to me what is a juice fast or so a juice diet or juicing or to reset your um, whatever, whatever the symptoms were at that time. Yeah, so basically you're intaking calories and nutrition, vitamins and minerals from fruits and vegetables that are juiced through a machine. Um, there's all kinds of different juicers out there and you would do that to give your digestive system a break and to give your body its own internal energy to heal itself, basically. Because so the concentrated nutrients, you're extracting it from the fruits and vegetables. And how many, how many juices did you have to drink in order to say, you know, I'm not 
hungry or I'm not weak. Yeah, you would be surprised at how amazing you'd feel. Um, I would say throughout a day, you would want to have five to six 16 ounce juices. Mm -hmm. And so when I first did it, I actually worked with a coach at a fasting center international in Santa Barbara, and he coached me through my juice fast. And it was pretty lengthy, but I mean, just in terms of resetting or, you know, if you're having digestive issues, you kind of need to, you know, let that settle or like skin issues, breaking out inflammation. It helps so much to deal with inflammation. I had terrible skin and I was just like, this is not normal. I mean, it, when you're having skin issues, it shows that something is going on internally and inflammation is like the root cause of so many things, arthritis. I mean, you can probably attest to what yes. inflammation can do to the body and to people. Right, right. So yeah. when you do the juice fast, how many days did you spend on a juice fast? Originally, when I had my big beautiful awakening turning point. Yeah. yeah. So this, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but I did 20 days. Okay. Yeah. And then later on, yeah, later on I tried 30 days and to me now I'm, I'm in my late thirties and I wouldn't, I don't have a desire to do that. I don't feel like I need to do that anymore um, unless I was really called to it. But for people who have like, you know, big health goals, they can get along with a coach or somebody to help them. You don't have to, I'm not saying you have to juice fast in order to revolutionize your health, but it's something that you can use as a tool to bring about healing. And of course, you know, if you're diabetic or you have blood sugar issues, it's always wise to work with a doctor. I'm not a doctor, um, but I do know like a couple of days, like if you're feeling sick, and you take, you, you take some juice for like two to three days and that'll help kick it so much faster than any kind of medicine. And like, you know, you just like, especially this time of year, people have these coughs and colds and flus that linger on for a week or two. If I feel something coming on and I make my fresh juices with ginger and turmeric in it, I'm, I'm good. Like I, I don't even necessarily have to take time off work. I might feel not at my best or really not so well. However, um, I feel like if I just ate a standard American diet, if I were having like a lot of meat and dairy products, that I would not be the same. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I can, I cannot tell you the number of people who would call me when they're sick. Like, you know, they have stomach flu. They call it the stomach flu. There's no stomach flu, but the, that's what people generally call when they have an upset stomach or mm -hmm. they have cold. And the, the emails that I get is, you know, my stomach has been so bad. I've yeah. tried to eat, eat a piece of chicken and I puked it. What should I do? It's like, stop eating. Yeah. And that concept is so hard for people. that They feel like if I don't eat, I would die. And a lot of times I tell people, your body has enough energy sustain you without any food or even water for seven days 14 days without any food if you have i mean especially if you have a lot of what we call adipose tissue you can go all the way for 30 days but you got to add water after about you know seven days you don't want to be without water and food but i think the concept of doing juicing i can already see questions popping up in people's minds number one They'll say, I'm a diabetic, I cannot have juice, my sugar will go up, right? The other one is like when you're sick, the last thing you want to be doing is take pull out the juicer and start mm. juicing. You agree? So yeah. we what would you say is a solution? I, I see, I hear what you're saying, and I totally agree with what you're saying, but I can tell you one of the things, the biggest challenges that people have in in terms of changing is they look at all the obstacles. Mm. And our goal is to see, hey, what is the solution? Where do you want to go? I want to feel great. I want, I want to get rid of my acne. I want to get rid of my psoriasis. I want to get rid of my eczema. It all begins in the gut. And yeah. your gut need, has bacteria. And yeah. the food that you eat feeds the bacteria so the gut is not destroyed by that bacteria. Because if it doesn't get food, then it's eating into the lining of your bacteria, of your mm. gut. And that's how you get the irritable bowel and the inflammatory bowel disorders. But somebody who is so sick, do you have any quick ways where they can get a juice? Do you, um, uh, 
you know, what are the tips you can give, like somebody who's scared to start, how can they even get started on a juicing diet? And once again, I, to people who are listening, this is not advice, this is information. Yes. It's, you know, this is her journey, and we're just talking about how did she get to that point. Of course, she lives, um, she was able to access this place in Santa Barbara, and I don't think Michigan has a fasting center. Maybe it gives me an idea as to what we should be doing here. Ah. But I'm just saying, you know, if you don't have any guidance, what would you say is a good way to start this process? So a good way to start is through education. Um, there are books and websites with lots of information. Um, I actually met Patricia Bragg. Have you heard of Paul and Patricia Bragg? And they have um, written many books, one particularly on fasting. I, I think, you know, I, uh, that name sounds familiar, but I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't think I've really read the book. Maybe it was something in passing I've seen. Yeah, so for me, it was really just, I took, I wanted to take my health and my future, my well-being into my own hands. So I took the opportunities to educate myself and really learn about it. And even to this day, I watched a documentary on Netflix. I wish I could remember the name of it, but it was about this fasting center in Russia. And it's just, it's just, it's a tool, right? There's different things we can do um, when you're feeling sick. If you don't want to fast, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. Like when you're sick and you're throwing up, food is probably not so appealing healing, right? You just need a lot of liquids and your body has that energy to heal itself. So if you're afraid to do it or you don't want to do it, I would say start by eliminating some of the foods that are not serving you, like sugar, processed sugar, processed flour, um, processed foods in general, fast foods, alcohol, these things can affect you. Even coffee, I know that's probably not the worst thing you can put in your body, but for me, there were times when I would have to go without it, and I still do. If I notice there's imbalances in my body, I just get down to the basics, like fresh whole foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, and smoothies are really great for people who don't want to juice because you're putting whole foods in a blender and you're keeping the fiber which some people, especially for diabetics, um, would benefit because, again, juice, it is um, going to go into the bloodstream a little bit quicker. And so because I'm not a doctor, I wouldn't say if you're diabetic, you should, you should juice. But the smoothies are really helpful. And what's great about when you're cutting out things like meat, dairy, sugar, animal products in general, um, I can say that's one of the biggest things that helped my skin to clear up and my digestive issues as well, because um, just, you know, as I went through life, I went through some experiences that were stressful, like we all do. And so yes. that, that affected my gut. It was like this whole gut brain psychology. Um, and there's plenty of articles on it. I do talk about that in the book briefly, but um, it's what the stress was, was ruining my just my digestive system and that's when i started looking at well how is coffee affecting this well coffee is acidic um coffee can mess up your blood sugar levels right it can cause that crash which is going to want you to eat more and maybe perhaps want more sugar or have food cravings or affect your mood and so once i did the juicing I transitioned into a vegan diet and I, ex I experimented with raw foods, a raw vegan diet. And I know that's not for everybody. And it's not necessarily sustainable for everybody long-term, but it's something that you can do. You can fall back on or even do for a week or 30 days to achieve cleansing and healing and rejuvenation like never before. So whole, whole foods, if not necessarily the juicing. Yeah, so you basically went from being almost a bulimic to uh, having an awareness, this is not how I want to live my life, to getting to, I'm going to find some help, and you decided going, going to this fasting center because you came across that information that this might be the best option, and from there you transitioned into going plant-based. Now, why did you make the transition to plant-based? Because you could still eat a whole food with a little meat, um, a protein, and having a lot of the uh, plants or, or the vegetables and uh, fruits. Why, why the transition from just juicing to only being plant-based? 
Absolutely. And thank you for asking that question, because in my um, training through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, we embrace this idea of bio-individuality, where what works for one person um, may not work for somebody else, because there's people who say, I went vegan and it destroyed my health. People say, I started eating meat and I'm feeling better. But then there's people who say, oh, I went vegan or I go plant-based and I'm feeling, it makes a world of a difference. So for me, I would have to say, um, I did learn about what was going on in the factory farming industry. I learned about how animals were being treated. Um, I learned about, and then I learned about the environmental impact. So those were two factors. But for me, it was, it was how I felt eating plant-based. I felt like, oh my gosh, I can enjoy this delicious food. It was exciting to try different recipes and to get creative in the kitchen. Um, as a kid, you know, I was just one of those weird kids that actually liked vegetables. I was just talking to my dad about this the other day. Uh, and he was telling me how he was like that. He's like, oh, I like vegetables. They're great. I'm like, I like them too. But my daughter, for example, she's like not so keen on vegetables and a lot of kids aren't. So, you know, maybe I'm just one of those like food weirdos that really enjoy yeah, yeah. eating broccoli or whatever, <laughs> like greens. Um, so hopefully I didn't get off topic there. We'll no, goodbye. you actually did because you, no, you didn't get off topic, topic but you did explain. Uh, so basically... For you, there were two things. Number one is how you feel because everybody is an individual and we always were very big on personalized care. And number two was the ethical issue around um, factory farming. And obviously none of us are getting, uh, even if they say uh, pasture raised or grass fed, if you actually ask the store, they will always say, you know, for the 30 days or the last 90 days before slaughter, they had to give grains in order to get the weight of the meat up as well as to marbleize it, uh, the marbleize the meat so it can be sold. Um, so I think a lot of people are not aware of that. But for you, it was number one, a personal choice. And number two, it actually made you feel better. I'm assuming that's the reason you decided, okay, I'm going to go plant-based. It wasn't a fad, but you, did you make a conscious decision? Did you think this was going to be a lifestyle for you when you started the journey? You know, it's so interesting that you bring that up because when I got into this, like it's kind of deemed more as a fad now, like the raw vegan diet, the juicing fad. But when I got into this and there was no YouTube, there was no internet. I was just like low, like the Lone Ranger, like doing this, I would eat like, you know, a big pineapple at lunchtime. My friends would be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> You're eating fruit for lunch. And now with so many influencers, like, you know, fully raw Christina and um, Ravana, it's like, wow, like the stuff that they're doing, I was doing back in, you know, the year 2000. And it was like, I was kind of the odd, like it was weird. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, oh, you, you're not, you're juicing. It's, I kind of, kind of had to keep it to myself because it hadn't become mainstream. And now there's raw food restaurants and it's like being vegan is cool. And um, lots of celebrities are doing it and having amazing results. And so um, that's, that's nice that it's not viewed as something. It's definitely not a conventional way of eating. It, it's unconventional. But I think that the benefits that it has is, so amazing um, whether you just want to experiment with it try it for yourself or adopt it long term I really didn't know I, I just wanted to try and um, I learned that you know statistically speaking vegans well vegetarians are known to live five years longer than the average person on a standard American diet and vegans were known to live seven years longer and so I thought wow there's something to this I should look more into it and so I got a book by David Wolf called The Sunset Diet Success System. And I read that and it was just going in with an open mind. Yeah. So it wasn't like you went with a preconceived notion, I'm going to be a plant-based eater. It's just that resonated well with you and more and more that became the path. The path became well-defined that this is how you want to live your life because you don't see any downside to being completely plant-based. Did I get that right? Absolutely. There really is no downside. And um, it, there's a strategic way to go about it because I think that you can live a plant-based lifestyle in an unhealthy way. 
And you can also, there's a right and there's a wrong way to do it, or there's, you know, good choices and not so good choices. And I do have a section about that in the book as well, called the seven shades of vegan, where I talk about, yeah, there's all, you know, there's like, so, especially now there's all these delicious foods that mimic traditional foods. And you can really just go get into that. But um, I tend to stick to, like, again, whole fresh foods, where I have found ways to, to make simple foods taste delicious by diving into different flavor combinations and adding in lots of healthy fats like nuts and avocados and buckwheat. Um, I learned about sprouting. I can make sprouts in my kitchen and add them to my salads. And I find that I'm able to eat so much more and feel satisfied and not feel terrible afterwards. Like I would if I like binged on pizza or like ate cheesecake. I would feel disgusting. <laughs> That's just me. The sensation that comes after you eat food. And most people don't. They think it's overeating, but it's actually the food itself. Um, yeah. and a lot of times. So let me ask you this. So some, the biggest challenge I can see right now, because we, this is what we do in our practice is people that hate to cook, ah. right? You know, yeah. staying a uh, plant strong, like you said, there's a variety of food and it's very delicious, but it's time consuming. I, when my, uh, our clients stop this process of actually adding vegetables, they say, I feel like the whole day I'm in the kitchen chopping vegetables. So is, do you have any, what can I call like uh, shortcuts or like uh, hacks in the kitchen that will help people make this like, you know what? This is a breeze. I can do it. It's, it takes the same amount for me to take out a, a burger from a box and stick it in a microwave and then stick it into my mouth. I mean, that sounds terrible, but I'm just yeah. saying, you know, people could do that. Is there a shorter and a, have you had some quick hacks to say you can eat a delicious meal even if you're short on time? Absolutely. There are ways that you can make this very, um, very adapted to your lifestyle, even when you're on the go. Um, I think the biggest thing is to clean out the fridge and the cabinets and just keep keep them stocked with the staples, right? Um, and anything that's worth it, anything that's going to get you results is going to take a little bit of effort. So you have to ask yourself why. What is it worth to me to feel amazing, to not have to rely on medications, to not have high cholesterol, diabetes? What is my health worth to me? Do I want to do something extreme like have a a stomach surgery I mean it's like to me it's it's an easy thing and you have to go to the grocery store or to the farmer's market once a week to keep your fridge stocked and then once you have everything it's easy to go home unwind a little bit and make your salad make your vegetables you can you can food prep one day a week you can pre-sort out your smoothies put them in plastic bags and stick them in the freezer so all you have to do in the morning is take it out, throw it in the blender, put it in a, a thermos, and you're ready to go. You could even do that the night before if you want to. A lot of times in the evening after, you know, I've had dinner and I've exercised, and before bed, I know that if I make my, if I want to have juice the next day and I make it that night, it maybe takes 10 minutes. And if you just look at it as like, you know, I think it's going to be this hard thing, and I'm you know, I, I know for me personally, I work full time. I have an 11 year old daughter and I have a life and I'm not in the kitchen all day <laughs> chopping vegegetables. You know what I'm saying? I, I prep, I make my food. I invest a little bit of time in that and then I take it with me on the go. So I, I like to have, you know, fruit is fast food. You can take in season fruits and vegetables like an apple, banana, persimmons are in season right now in California. So if I go to the farmer's market on a Sunday, I just stock up on all this stuff I have for the week and I take it to go with me. So I always have food on hand and I don't have to reach for, you know, whatever's in front of me because I'm not prepared. Mm -hmm. And so, um, really, and, and even if you're, if that's like raw, but if you're cooking your food, you can batch which is really simple. Make, yeah. Make a big batch of, if you're going to have brown rice or, uh, quinoa or whatever that is and then you or you can make a big pot of soup and eat that throughout the week with a different veggie every day that you could either um, steam or 
bake in the oven. You know, when you come home from work, you can get all that just like butternut squash. Squashes are great to have in the winter time. Um, sweet potatoes, even just regular potatoes which are very, very nutritious. They have protein. They even have iodine in them, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you just, you put it in the oven for a little bit, you go do your thing, and then it, it's like it's ready. And you season it with whatever sauce or flavor that you're really into, and it's easy. So let me ask you, what would you say is the absolute staple in the fridge? What is the absolute staple in your pantry? So the best staple to have in your fridge and your pantry? Mm -hmm. Yes. For me, it's greens. I like to have a lot of greens because I eat a large salad in the evening. Um, so whether it's kale or romaine or um, Swiss chard or collard leaves, I like to make wraps. So you want to have your greens. You want to have your fruit for the week because whether you're going to eat it whole or you're going to juice it, you want to have it on hand. I would say frozen fruit is really great to have. Bananas, most definitely, because those make smoothies amazing. Um, in addition to your favorite nut butters, like peanut butter or almond mm -hmm. butter, I like to have almonds or pecans or something, nuts on hand. I use those. Um, what else? In the pantry, I absolutely love tahini. I like to use tahini yes. as salad dressings. And it's a good source of plant-based calcium as well. And uh, avocados and lemons, of course, because the avocado is a healthy fat that can help you feel full when you're eating. Mm -hmm. And I mean, most people love them. I don't know anyone who doesn't love avocados. Well, I, I do. I, I actually do. But yes, once you make it into guac, I have kids who hate the avocado but love guac. And I never figured that out. But yes. Yeah, I agree. And somebody said the avocado is like a savory pear that costs, uh, that has the price of a house. So uh, especially when it's not in season, right? Yeah, I know. That and I, think, I think that's, that's the other challenge is the price of um, a high plant strong plant based diet in compare comparison to a 99 cent burger on the run. Um, and sometimes what people need to understand the perspective is this is your body. This is, yeah, now you're putting in all this cheap food and just wait till you get all those expensive medications and those visits to the doctor and the hospital and really? connect the two. And it's just unfortunate people don't connect the way they live their life to the diseases they get. They're happy to accept the fact that diseases came because my dad had it, my mom had it. And I think yeah. I want to, you know, this is a good way to start. And I would say um, if somebody's struggling with multiple medical issues, a good way to start is drink water and get on the fruits and vegetables, even if it's two that you can buy and just begin and cut back on the processed stuff. We can talk about the meat and the milk later. And I, I think the biggest thing about milk, which we find is yogurt and cheese. It's almost like I pull, pull people's lifeline when we tell them not to have cheese and yogurt. Mm -hmm. So, and what do you, um, did you ever feel that? I mean, you said you, you would eat a pizza. Was that something that you were um, struggling with when you first stopped? Or it was like you were so sick that it didn't matter whether you ate it or not? Yeah. So before I get into that, what you said about people thinking that because my family has this, I'm going to have it and they just kind of accept it. But something that is so revolutionary to think about is that you can alter the genetic expression of your genes. You may have certain genes that are going to lead you up to some kind of sickness or a health atrocity, but depending on how you live and how you eat, you don't have to necessarily fall into that. Right. An unhealthy way of being or, or suffer from that thing. So right. that was the first thing that I just am excited to share with people is that you can turn it around most definitely. And just about the cost, um, I understand everyone has a different budget. I know it can really add up, especially when you're getting into superfoods and supplements and different things that you can get into. I'm kind of a geek when it comes to this stuff. So I really like, you know, sometimes I would rather, um, create some kind of delicious raw vegan meal and get my nails done, believe it or not. So um, being vegan or plant-based can be 
can make it totally affordable just by purchasing frozen fruits and vegetables. Like I said, yes. having your um, go-to like beans and rice or different legumes, um, as long you know, as long as you're able to digest them well. Having squashes, like I said, you can really get the basics and keep keep the cost down. Most definitely, that's that shouldn't be a problem if you talk to the right people and get advice about how to do it. Um, yeah, yeah. but then the, the other piece about, like you said, pizza, well, one of the things that I learned as I was researching and writing my book is food addiction and how some of these foods affect the pleasure center in your brain. And so sugar is highly addictive. And when they were doing some studies with rats, they found that it was as addictive as something like uh, a nar narcotic because it affects the pleasure center in your brain. And so we see this in children quite a bit it's just even in adults like sugar is addictive addictive because it is so gratifying um, the problem is we crash and it's an empty calorie mm -hmm. and then with dairy the same thing um, it's 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 been around in our culture for years and years however humanity has evolved so that we don't have to necessarily rely on the cow anymore mm -hmm. but cow cow's milk was created in nature for baby cows, right? And 65% uh, of the world's population is known to be lactose intolerant. So that's a clue right there. Um, casein is a protein in the milk that also has shown to be addictive. Right. And so I know, I see children, they love to eat cheese. They love to drink milk. It does have nutritional benefits. It has protein, it has calcium, it has vitamin D. Um, but what I have found is that you can get those nutrients from plants if you're strategic about it, right? You have to make sure you eat the foods that are going to give you those, that nutrition. Um, and you can get vitamin D from the sun. Your body makes it naturally. If you live in an area where you don't, are not able to get a lot of sun, um, you can take a supplement. Or what I found in a lot of the plant-based milks that I like to use, they're fortified with vitamin D. Yeah. And so, yeah, so you can definitely eat plant-based um, in a way that's going to be okay with your budget and with your lifestyle and with your time as well. Because the burger, it's like, that's, that's kind of like a political issue. Like why is a salad $5 and a burger is 99 cents? And then we have all these health issues and then it's like a healthcare thing. So, so that's, that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. I, I Sorry about that. Uh, a lot of times we try to tell our patients use common sense um, in, in what you value, right? When you value your health, the price does not matter. And mm -hmm. at that point, and uh, hanging around people who actually value health, I think, gets them to the next level. And Marina here is our nutrition coach, and I'm sure she, her head is just buzzing with questions. So I'm gonna, and she struggles with trying to coach people to get them to the next level. So I'm gonna open the floor to her to ask all her questions. Absolutely, Shelly. Thanks for sharing all of your insights. I think it's really helpful for people to hear your journey. Um, I liked what you said about, you know, juicing is kind of for some people and for other people, maybe it's smoothies might be the answer. I think a lot of our listeners who are with our practice are a little bit more used to smoothies. So if they want to start juicing, what would be like, what is your very like base juice? Like, hey, this is going to taste good, so they're not afraid to go ahead and kind of make that leap and make their first juice. What would you put into it? Yeah, and so my go-to juice that I feel like gives me the biggest benefit in terms of health, energy, and beauty is the green juice. And I know this has become very popular um, in the past few years. It's kind of like juice bars are popping up everywhere, and uh, you can order the juices online. But I, it, there really is something to it. It's like a green lemonade. And I learned about this back, um, you know, in like the, I would say early 2000s. And uh, it's greens blended with apple, lemon, and ginger. And you can go from there. So like you can juice kale, romaine, apple, ginger, lemon. Lemon is really key to make it palatable because, you know, if you're just drinking straight greens, unless you have a really <laughs> advanced palate, you're going to think, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. Like I wouldn't even like it so much. So you can add in a little bit of apple and make it as sweet as you want. You can do something like apple, romaine, lemon, and ginger. I find that the ginger 
it is very helpful to reduce inflammation and to um, help prevent colds and sickness. And so even if you're not juicing ginger, using fresh ginger in your cooking or in your salad dressing even um, is really good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Big that you kind of switched to more of a plant based type of juicing was you started to have skin issues. I know that's kind of something that a lot of people are interested in. Um, so, what would be like three tips that you would say, hey, start this if you do have something like acne and you've been struggling with it or other things? Absolutely. I would say when it comes to your skin, we have to look at one inflammation, two sleep habits, and three stress and getting down to the root of it. Because for me, I had to. Um, when I cut out the dairy products, I noticed that it helped me tremendously with my digestion and my skin and eating anti-inflammatory foods, of course. Um, if I'm stressed out or if I'm not sleeping enough, then cutting back on caffeine for some time really, really helps because for whatever it is, for some reason that can cause for me an imbalance. And so just being mindful of you know, doing a, having a food journal, writing down, oh, every day, what am I eating? Um, how, how is my skin today? What did I eat? Is there something linked to that? Because uh, acne can, can be for various reasons. I know there's this belief that um, what you eat is not going to affect it. Well, I would have to disagree. I think that to a certain extent, what you eat affects everything. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, and uh, sorry, Marina had to step out because the computer said low battery and we're trying to get the wire before ah. we fall off. But um, I totally agree because I know um, I, I have two teenage kids and the first thing when they have acne, they don't go, it, my, my kids will never go to a dermatologist. They don't even think about like, you know, I gotta wash my face. They immediately change what they're eating. And yeah like instantaneous how their skin clears up and it and a lot of people don't and even dermatologists don't believe what you eat but at the same time they have all these vitamins that they do prescribe that they say will help your skin now that's what food is food is filled with vitamins and minerals yeah. and all you're doing is just instead of buying capsules you're making it a daily habit to take care of your skin from internally to the external. And you know, one of the things that I, I'm sure um, uh, uh, the skin tone, right? For when you're Caucasian, the biggest things that you see is those black spots, which they call aging spots. As mm -hmm. you're older, you will find the minute you get off animal protein or many of those, those spots actually get better. And people who are very plant strong rarely get those. Yeah. And yeah, and, you know, they, they think of it as like, you know, I, I don't know what they call it. I think they call it aging spots in general, like when you look in, um, like, a lot of those black things. Yeah, I know you're talking about I'm not sure what that term is. I mean, I don't, want to, say, I don't want to say acne. Uh, a, no, I'm not talking about the knowledge, the keratinosis, but actually they, they are black spots, and you can see people as they age, they have it on their face, on their hands, and then you'll find that as you move away from the high-fat diet, particularly the oils, as well as from the saturated animal fats. Though this plant fats are saturated, like coconut oil is a saturated plant fat, but moving away from so much of fat will unclog your uh, pores and reduce acne. And a lot of the uh, dermatological conditions that are autoimmune, like psoriasis and um, um, you know, with lupus and all of those will completely shift as you ch change to a nutrient dense diet. Absolutely. You, that was very powerful because if you think about why do we take vitamins? Well, eat what's in the vitamin. Vitamin A is something that can positively affect the skin. I think that's what retin A is, right? It's like a potent form of vitamin A. Well, pumpkin is loaded with vitamin A. Um, kiwi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, papaya, it's delicious. Um, there's a recipe in my book that's like a papaya jicama salad yes. with herbs, chili. I love putting chili powder and lemon uh, and a little bit of sea salt on fruit that can make it have kind of a different flavor. 
And that was one of the things that I did years ago when I was trying to clear my skin is I would eat like a meal of papaya just and a lot of it, right? Um, so being, being clean and feeling good on the inside, it's going to show. And I always look, if my skin is breaking out or it's having some kind of issue, I always look at, well, am I sleeping? What's stressing me out right now? Do I need to back off on this thing? Do I need to spend some time in a spiritual practice to get back in alignment? And what am I eating? Um, am I having too much caffeine? Am I drinking, you know, is alcohol affecting things? Um, and, and also, I, I haven't mentioned this before, but I did discover that um, cutting gluten out from my diet helped my digestive system and even my um, mood improve quite a bit. So that's, that's another topic because some people say like, oh, gluten, you know, the, the whole non-gluten thing has become a fad as well. No, yeah. but if you know, medically, one of the things we do is we do actually check people for gluten sensitivity. It's almost like... 30% of the population do not know. That it's not about celiac disease at all. No. So it's very obvious. You have stomach issues. We are trying to get off gluten, but gluten is present in a lot of the, even though a plant uh, like corn can cross-react with somebody who has gluten sensitivity. So that becomes a whole different topic to talk about, and there are several experts in that field. But in general, um, you have to, I think the important point that you're making, which is really very deep, and um, I hope people don't miss that, is you have to have an awareness about what's happening within you and surrounding you, whether it be your stressor, whether it be your sleep, what are you doing? Most people run when they have a symptom to somebody outside and say, like a doctor, and say, oh, I have all these problems, and I'm looking for that solution in a capsule. And that's where I think most of us are failing. That's where our healthcare is failing, because you can, I tell my patients, come and run to me if you have a symptom. I need to talk to you, and let's talk this out, and let's see what is the solution. And, you know, when there is testing needed, testing is needed. However, a lot of times is first having that awareness. What did you do different? What are you doing different? How is your environment different? What can you change? There are some things you cannot change. There are some things you can change. And do all of that and partner with somebody, a healthcare professional or somebody who can assist you with that to get you to that next level. Absolutely. And I am so grateful for doctors and for medicine. There's miracles that happen because of modern medicine and, and doctors and the surgery and whatnot. However, that is like a last, res that's like a last resort. I mean, Absolutely. there is so much power in, in a lifestyle that is so simple with eating the right foods and exercising and, and having good sleep patterns and healthy relationships. It's like, so much of the suffering that goes on with obesity and diabetes and you know heart attacks that are happening all this stuff is completely preventable in my opinion if, if, if you know, have to make the choice preventable they're, re they're reversible too reversible absolutely yeah yeah mm -hmm. Marina, uh, where can we get your book where can you get my book? Well, thank you for asking. I actually have it in front of me right now, and you can get it on Amazon. It's called Beautiful Awakening. And yes. Um, and how many recipes do you have in that book? Because I know I re we really love the recipes. You do? Have you tried them? I think Marina tried a couple, right? Yeah, I mean, the book is beautiful. It's awesome. The Very book, well yeah. done. Thank you so much. So there are, I think, about 50 recipes in the book. And this was, this was an amazing process. And it, a lot of these recipes are things that I was just exclude that I would be making in the kitchen. And I just decided to document it and write it down. And so there's a juice section where I've got some uh, juices. I talk about how to juice. Um, I gave them cute little names because I'm kind of creative and quirky like that. Yeah. And I also have a smoothie section where it's got a couple of my favorite smoothies, like the chocolate chip mint. Yes. Yeah. And, th and this has been such um, the, the sweet smoothies, like with the banana and the chocolate and the nut butter has really helped to knock out any kind of sweet tooth or for people who crave the sweets. If you're having lots of fruit, 
in your diet, you're not going to crave the unhealthy carbs. And the the side effect is that your skin's going to look beautiful because fruits are full of antioxidants and nutrition and water that your body needs. Um, I also have uh, like an acai bowl and some entree type of recipes like pâtés that you can put in romaine lettuce leaves to eat like tacos or wraps that to wrap in as a filling with collard leaves. Um, And then a chili recipe, zucchini noodles, um, kelp noodle pad thai, which is fantastic and a beet burger that I've gotten really good reviews on. Haven't made those in a while, but they're, they're really good. And desserts, sauces, dressings. I mean, I'm really, I really like to make food. Right. Even when I was younger, I used to watch like the great chefs shows before Food Network even came out. And I'm just like, you know, all about it. So, so. on an average, how much time does the recipe take to make? On average? How much time does your recipe take um, yeah. to make? Is it like 30 minutes? I think in your book, you did put a time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're definitely, I mean, these are like 30 meals in less type of minutes. Okay. So it, um, that's 30 meal, you know, it's like 30 minutes or less type of thing. It's literally about having your fridge stocked, having your spices and your, your nut butters or whatever. Um, I also like to have flax seed on hand and chia seed on hand. Um, usually hemp seeds, because it's just a matter of knowing which flavor combinations you like, throwing them in the food processor, blending them up, um, chopping them up, having your salad, and it's like, you know, I do it, I'm done. You don't have to spend hours cooking, because cooking can be time-consuming too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're very happy that you could come on a podcast, because I think it really opens a different, um, I guess, a way to get started. I think most people are overwhelmed when something is new. And I think you gave some very uh, easy tips to uh, just, you know, eat a fruit. Start by eating a fruit that you love. Yeah, that's, well, that's an awesome something new, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you so much again. And um We'll have this podcast up over the week, so I know everybody's going in for their Christmas holiday, and uh, most likely we're not going to be here on the 26th, but I will send you guys something recorded on the 26th if somebody is bored after Christmas and wants to watch another podcast. But thank you once again, Shelly. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to share and to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.